Hey there, in this recording I'm going to describe what are called the special relativity paradoxes um, explained in Pi Space. Um, the par they're, they're, they're not so much paradoxes as they're just more, it's an intuition thing where where once human intuition kicks in and uh, the logic of special relativity d doesn't seem to hold with our normal intuition. So the, the, the first thing to note about it is the two examples I'm going to take are the, the ladder in the barn example and the second one is the twins paradox. So uh, let's before I, I go into go into the example and explain how the how it works in Pi space, I'm going to first um, make a general statement about about relative motion in in Pi space, right? So the the basic idea in Pi space and special relativity by implication is that if A is moving relative to B, it's not the same as B moving relative to A. So, uh, so what do I mean? So if a car passes you at 20 miles an hour, the pie shells of the moving object are smaller, or the atoms. The atoms of the car are smaller. Uh, if you pass a car at 20 miles an hour, then your pie shells or atoms are smaller. So the object which moves um, has smaller has small has a smaller atom uh, in special relativity the way they describe this is there's a there's a, a shortening in the direction of movement uh, that maps to a diameter change in an atom in pi space and the overall atom gets smaller so let's take let's take the examples of um the uh the ladder in the barn right so the idea is that there's a there's a barn a stationary barn and the ladder is longer than the barn and it is tra it's traveling at a speed where its length is contracted uh, so as it goes through the barn uh, it fits into the barn and this is uh, this is ladder a traveling relative to ladder to barn B right so the ladder will fit inside the barn and then pi space it's just that the pie shells are smaller. It, it's length contracted, but it's also height contracted as well. The, I, the height of the ladder is, is slightly shortened as well. Uh, that's the difference between special relativity, Einstein version, and pi space. That's the amendment. Now, if the barn is traveling relative to the ladder, then the barn is shorter than the ladder, okay? Because the ladder, because the barn's um, atoms are smaller. So, so the two examples aren't um, aren't equivalent. In other words, a moving a moving a relative to b is not the same as b relative to a, because the the object which moves, movement is the key. Movement requires something to change. And in pi space, it's that the atom gets smaller and that the wavelengths that make up the atom uh, get shorter and they have higher energy and it moves faster. So although we don't see that happening, that's what's happening. And in our reality, the, the change is so small, you, you, uh, you can barely see it. And uh, also in a magnetic field does this, it makes atoms smaller. But that's another discussion. But the point is movement requires things to get smaller in pi space. Or shortening of the, the length in special relativity. Now, the the Minkowski diagrams can be used to explain this barn example, but it's not a an easy thought experiment. Uh, <clears throat> so the way Einstein explained this is he called it relative simultaneity, sim simultaneity, and he explained that that observers see different results depending on their frame of reference, moving or not. Okay. So traditionally, an, an observer is when something moves relative to something else, you're, make, you're basing it off your, in, in, in pi space, the, the definition of an observer is quite explicit. It's the size of the atoms of the observer, right? Okay, okay. Um, so it's not just, 
we, we have this idea that the two observers are the same but and a moving observer is small atoms are smaller than a non-moving observer uh, now there is there are those who say that uh, this breaks the principle of non-locality in quantum mechanics right uh, and um, the key amendment to understanding this in 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 pi space or in special relativity as far as I'm concerned is that you're dealing with um, with uh, atoms of varying mass density or diameters so the when you're dealing with quantum mechanics typically you're dealing with probability waves and um, mostly they're all traveling at the speed of light so their diameters are all fixed um, and they're not pi and they're and they're a wave and they're not a not a sphere an atom so so this principle of sim uh, relative simultaneity is related to uh, spheres of different sizes atoms of different sizes uh, when you're talking about quantum mechanics you're dealing with waves um, traveling at the speed of light um, C and uh, well, varying energy uh, levels right so in this to a certain extent it's a, you're comparing apples and oranges if you uh, say that it breaks the principle of non-locality uh, as far as I'm concerned in this theory all right now the next example is is uh, is th is to do with time dilation and the idea is that um, one twin leaves the earth and goes on board a spaceship and travels near the speed of light and then returns home so the twin who's been traveling in the spaceship accelerates up uh, does goes on a certain distance slows down and then comes back and then decelerates and the twin who is on the the twin who is on uh, the spaceship uh, experiences less time and is younger uh, relative to the twin who is on the earth right and there's a lot of people who say well you know bec uh, it's a relative me uh, the speed is a relative measurement uh, the, the the twin on the earth might perceive that the that the uh, that the ship moved away from it. Therefore, why doesn't the twin on the Earth get get the age more slowly? And um, <clears throat> so it's really simple in Pi space. The the twin who's on the the twin who's on the spaceship um, uh, it, an acceleration in Pi space. And I'll deal with this in other lectures. An acceleration is just about. Uh, an atom losing area and getting smaller um, a deceleration is about um, an atom getting larger right so when we think of the the when we think of the twin on board the ship accelerating away from the earth um, the twins uh, who's who's on the ship uh, his 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 atoms get smaller um, at, a, at, a, at a constant rate uh, the, the thing here is that Einstein never completed his work on uh, on acceleration he gave up on it and went off and created this other theory uh, called special relativity but in the pi space theory is a more complete theory and all that acceleration is in pi space is that um, is that it, an atom uh, is just uh, getting smaller uh, by, by a constant uh, area loss that's actually what uh, g uh, g over c is it's a it's a it's an area loss on the observer sphere uh, with respect to distance h or time t squared um, uh, that's another discussion but just think of the astronaut on board the spaceship it accelerates the the astronaut and the spaceship get smaller uh, the the velocity evens out at uh, a relativistic speed the clock the pie shells are smaller the clock tick is slower. I've discussed this in other, um, I've discussed this in other lectures. Then the the ship turns around, it decelerates a little bit, and uh, the the pie shells get a little bit bigger, which is all that the deceleration is. It then reaccelerates again, get gets smaller, and then it comes back to the Earth, and it decelerates and then lands on planet Earth, and then the pie shells are basically the same size, uh, but the the 
astronaut on board the ship had smaller pie shells and um, the clock tick is slower in a, in, a, in a smaller pie shell. So the pie shell uh, or the atom it actually has its own clock tick. Uh, it, it, the rate at which it, event, it processes events. Uh, now one of the important principles here, this might sound confusing to people who have studied uh, relative, special relativity, uh, the key amendment in pi space to, um, to the, the Einstein work is that the pi shell does not flatten into a pancake or an ellipse. In fact, the whole pi shell shrinks in terms of its diameter. So all the pi shell buildings building the frame of reference shrink. So it's all about the diameter getting smaller. So um, I've, I've shown that in uh, the Pythagorean work. I've shown it in the various um, lectures I've done so far. And I also have a, if you're unclear about this idea of a pi shell, I have um, a lecture on what I call understanding the pi space notation. And it just, just, just draws the diagrams in a very elementary way in case you're not sure what I'm talking about. But um, it, these examples are very simple and very intuitive if you think of pi space, but um, I could understand why they m it might be confusing if you have this idea that a car coming at you, the relative difference can be either from your perspective or from the perspective of the other driver. But th the thing which is moving the fastest has the smallest pi shells, aka atoms. And that's the, the rule. And an acceleration is uh, um, an atom losing area with respect either to distance or time. And a deceleration is an atom or a pie shell gaining area with respect to distance or time. So the, the two astronauts, the one on the, the, one on the Earth is larger, in, larger atoms than the, the one who's moving in the spaceship. And uh, that's it. That's the, that's the uh, the, the ideas uh, explained in Pi Space, the uh, the paradoxes. All right. Thanks for listening.